Hey, happy St. Patrick's Day. Miss Vetch coming to you from my couch. Ready to talk about a little chapter two, Great Gatsby. I don't know if I can do it with these glasses on. Let's see. Can you look at me with these glasses on? Nah, I don't think so. All right, there we go. All right, so here we go. Tomorrow, you guys are going to actually have a quiz on chapter two, The Great Gatsby. Mm -hmm. That's right. So make sure that you finish reading it. And um, your question last night, I asked you guys about the Valley of Ashes and the eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg. Both of those are very predominant symbols in the novel, and they are going to appear again and again. So make sure you're utilizing your notice and note reading strategies, okay, as you're going through the book. And feel free to utilize a pencil, post-it pads to annotate, and you could just mark up these books. They are very old. We have a bunch of new ones coming uh, but maybe use a pencil so we can erase some of the marks and don't go too crazy. But um, it'll probably help you a great deal because there is some tough vocabulary and there is a lot of plot development that is going to start to happen. We're going to learn a lot of direct and indirect characterization about Jay Gatsby. So it's really important that we start to decipher maybe what is actual fact and what is maybe rumor. Um, remember it things that are told to us directly about maybe what he's wearing, how he looks, his physical appearance, that is direct characterization. We are told directly what he's looking like. Um, things about his, we have rumored activity about the type of person that Jay Gatsby is, um, his activities, how he earned his money, um, where he earned his money, was he in the war, not in the war? Uh, how did he get that house? What is his past like? We have all these questions about your past versus your present. Uh, these are going to come up actually as themes in the novel. But start to, again, take note of the development of the character of Jay Gatsby, as well as the um, other women that we meet in the novel, especially in chapter two. We're introduced to another integral woman, Myrtle Wilson. So therefore we have Daisy Buchanan. We know that as our prim and proper, and for lack of a better term, shall we say our trophy wife. Um, she is better seen, not heard. She chooses to live that life with Tom Buchanan. We know in chapter one, Tom gets a phone call. Jordan Baker, our second woman that we are introduced to, right away starts Busy body rumor talking with Nick. Oh my God, that's Tom's mistress. And we meet her in chapter two. In the Valley of Ashes, mind you, with the eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg. Da, 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 looking over you. Um, that is supposed to be literally that. This higher power that is watching over us and looking over us and kind of keeping us in check or just letting us know that maybe we should keep ourselves in check. And notice that it is in the location of the Valley of Ashes, which is physically um, symbolizing the industrial revolution of the time period. This is where our web quest came in, where we did all that stuff about the 1920s and um, the boom of our nation and the development of our nation and how some people had a tough time going with the changes and kind of rolling with the new times. People wanted to hold on to the past of America, why some people were taking advantage of these new business opportunities. And our buddy Jay Gatsby and um, doing some different things with their lives and earning money in different ways. And that made some people question the American way. So the Valley of Ashes symbolizes a lot of different things. We have a figurative meaning and then a literal meaning. So the literal is what many of you commented on in your response about the Industrial Revolution, uh, George and Myrtle Wilson that lived there, George being a mechanic, a working man, a blue collar, character, if you will, compared to Tom Buchanan, who comes from old money. Okay, remember he lives in East Egg, um, and that is inherited generational money that's passed down. And then we have our new money of Jay Gatsby living in West Egg, and a lot of that money is rumored to have been earned illegally, perhaps through bootlegging or um, speakeasies or uh, prohibition, you know, again, during this time period was going on so people made money in a lot of illegal ways you know Al Capone being one of them so in the Valley of Ashes it's a reminder to us as readers of the moral decomposition of the time period and perhaps how some people were morally compromised to make some money and do some 
other things in their life. Let's take a look at Tom. They drive through the Valley of Ashes, right, from the East Egg, West Egg part of Long Island Sound to get to Manhattan. And why are they going there in Chapter 2? Tom's going to pick up his mistress. They're going to an apartment. Think about this. He has an apartment in Manhattan so that he can go and hang out with his whole other side of his life. You know, mistress, Myrtle Wilson. And in your study guide, you were asked about some of the other characters that we um, meet at that little party in the apartment. And as you finish reading the rest of chapter two, notice how uncomfortable Nick is with the situation. He's really not quite sure what to make of it. As we learned about him in chapter one, that he was inclined to reserve all judgment. So does Nick do a really good job of reserving judgment while he's sitting there in the apartment watching Tom, who is the husband of his cousin, with another woman? And to the extent where he has a secret hideaway that they run away to, and there's just a whole bunch of things going on with that situation. So please size that up and what you think of Nick Carraway in that scene. Um, finish up the rest of your chapter two study guide. Please make sure that you are familiar with the character development and what we're learning about Jay Gatsby, as well as the new characters that we meet in that chapter. Uh, we have Myrtle Wilson, we have George Wilson, and I believe, I don't know if we met Mayor Wolfsheim yet. He's, he's mentioned um, in there. We also meet a couple other friends of Myrtle, her sister, and she's going to reappear again in the novel. So you're going to want to take note of that, please. Um, the symbols of the Valley of Ashes and the eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg will be reoccurring again and again. Uh, so let's please also take note of that throughout the novel and page numbers where you're going to be seeing that. Um, if you would like, I'll post the information for the notice and note signposts on Google Classroom for you. So you have them handy. Uh, Another key thing I need to point out to you about the book and your study guide. If you were to flip to the back of the study guide after chapter 9 and the end of the novel, there are a couple of other things that you need to complete. One of them being um, symbols, five major symbols of the novel. The green light, Gatsby's house, the eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg, West Egg, East Egg, and the Valley of Ashes. And then the illusions of the novel. Remember, an illusion is something when the writer, the author, refers to an event in history or something from literature or refers to something from around the world. A reference. They're making an illusion. They're alluding to something that they think we as readers already know. So F. Scott Fitzgerald makes a bunch of illusions and he assumes that we as re readers already know and we're familiar with the context of the time period and we know all about the 1920s, which we probably don't. So what I need you guys to do, and I don't know if you realize this, if you flip through the book, in the back of the book um, of your Great Gatsby book, page 206, one there is a map, okay? And then on page 207, they give you these explanatory notes and what the explanatory notes to is actually explain all of the illusions in the book. So your first one that you have to do is the rise of the colored empires. There's one about Midas Morgan and Macinus. That is actually mentioned in chapter one. So I don't know if you picked up on that or not. And I'm referring to the end of the study guide. Um, but those answers for those illusions, again, are on page 207 in the back of the book right here under explanatory notes. All right, guys, um, finish up chapter two. Tomorrow you will have a quiz on chapter two. Um, I need you to check in every day on Google Classroom. So this video I'm going to post and I need you all to respond to it. I saw it, thanks Miss Vetch, whatever the case may be. So that counts as your attendance for the day. You're gonna finish your study guide and um, get ready for your quiz tomorrow. Okay. Have a great day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. This is all crazy and weird, but we're going to get through all of this. And I hope you guys are having a great day and you're figuring all of this out. Please email me if you need help with anything. If you're having questions, you can remind 101 me. You can send a comment on um, Google Classroom or more um, independent, personalized, private. You can email me. 
And remember, it's L, Vecchione, V like in Victor, E, C, C, H, I, O, N, E, at mtschools.org. And um, I'll help you out, and we'll get this all done. Just like my pillow says, life is tough, but so are you. All right, guys. Happy St. Patrick's Day. See you tomorrow.